this week, I'm making a wreath of butterflies out of scrap fabric. I was inspired by these scrap fabric moths I'd seen on Pinterest, but the majority of scrap fabric I have is made of bright patterns, much more suited for butterflies. I started off drawing out a template using a cabbage butterfly as my reference, though it does look more moth-like than I intended. I figured it would do for a prototype. And then my mum let me take her quilting scraps, so my small pile of six or seven fabrics turned into this mountain, which I cannot wait to turn into more fun projects like this. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I started by sorting out the fabrics, and this was definitely not an excuse to procrastinate. Anyway, I knew I wanted to use pattern fabrics, as I wanted to create a high quantity of butterflies, and it would allow me to create a bunch of different looks, even if I stuck to one or two shapes. Once I have happily sorted my fabrics into colour groupings, I pinned the template to the fabric. Where I had the larger piece, I cut out a section before going in and cutting it properly, just to keep a clean edge on things. I found when dealing with ratty edges and fabric scraps that if you're raking through it, you can tear the decent bit you've got left over. For my first prototype, I had to go hand sewing the whole thing, which I absolutely do not have the patience for to do properly. Certainly not for the quantity I was thinking of. After joining the front and back pieces, I added some detail to the front. I was not happy with the result. It looks very rushed, and I could not imagine making more than half a dozen of them. Even if I took the time to try and perfect them on a finalised version, there would not be enough of them to cover the wire wreath I planned attaching them to. I figured, why not try the same thing on a sewing machine? It would give cleaner, neater lines. But I'm not very good at free motion quilting, so it did not turn out the best. I figured, as an evidently poor seamstress, I was better off hiding my wonky seams than trying to figure out a stylized way to make them work, so I made another template with a seam allowance which would allow me to hide them on the inside. I pinned the fabric and cut it out. And then sewed the two sides together. Then I cut a few notches to make it easier to turn inside out, a step I later forgot about, and sewed shut the gap. I did hand stitch the body, if only because it is a smaller piece and probably would have gone itself eaten by my sewing machine. But it was the same idea as the rest of the body, with the front and back pieces sewn back to back and turned inside out. I stuffed it with toy stuffing, though you could easily use leftover fabric or thread cuttings if you don't have any. I sewed the body shut, and finally I attached all three pieces together. This prototype was definitely getting somewhere. I had the structure nailed with this one, but it was missing something. Even with the fun prints, it was just a little too plain, and I definitely should have ironed it before sealing the holes I used to turn its wings the right way. I'll not repeat myself for the final prototype, since the bulk of it was the exact same process as the previous one, but there were a few differences. I fixed the templates to have a more typical butterfly shape, with upward pointing wings. I drew in the guides for the seam allowance so they would be more even. On the inside of the body, I just used a back stitch rather than a blanket stitch, both to save time but also because it was a little tighter, which stopped the stuffing from spilling. While I was getting the hang of the detail lines on the front of the two sets of wings, I drew out some rough guides using a Conte pencil. You could also use chalk or a pasta. Now I had a working prototype I was happy with, it was time to start producing the main butterflies. Once I had all my pieces ready to go, I started by sewing the detail lines in the front of the wings. Then I sewed the front and back pieces together so the insides were facing out. I repeated the process on the underwing, sewing the detail lines in the front, then joining the two pieces together. and turned both the right way around. Then I repeat the process until I had gone through all of my pieces. For the body parts, I used the exact same process as the prototype, so I ended up doing these in bulk off camera. I then ironed flat all of the wing pieces,
I then sold shut the gaps. It was much easier to get a cleaner look on these since I had them first. I sold the top wings to the underwings at the point of the head and where the top wing ends with the underwing. This created two pinch points which give the slightest impression of form to the butterflies, which help act as a guide for where to place the body. You'll know it's in place when you're able to pull the thread taut and the body remains upright without leaning to one side, and here they all are. Finally, it was time to make the wreath. I'm using this wire frame to attach them all to and started by just laying the butterflies out on top of it to find a look that I liked and settled on a double ringed gradient which would, hopefully, cover the frame. To attach the butterflies, I used jump rings, the sort you get for making jewellery, and jammed it through the back of the underwing and tightened it around the wire. They were quite difficult to wrangle in place, but I eventually got them to work, and they are quite easy to reposition if you decide you don't like the way it turns out. However, I should have added the butterflies to the inner rings of the hoop, because they had no support beneath their wings and would just spin whenever I picked it up. But that was an easy fix. And this is the final result. There are some gaps on its sides, which are maybe because of the way I hung them more than a lack of butterflies, but I was cutting it very fine with the deadline I wanted to get this video up, so that'll be a fix for another day. Have a very lovely day, and I'll see you next weekend.